Greetings, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity for us to present in Nanapur Community Meeting 2021. I am Ariel Pradipta, Senior Research Fellow from Genomic Solidaritas Indonesia Lab. We are part of the Indonesian response in pandemic management. When COVID-19 first detected in Indonesia on 2nd of March 2020, we responded by providing SARS-CoV-2 PCR diagnostic services capable of finishing up to 5,000 tests per day. As the pandemic progressed, we noticed that variants became an issue, especially with variants of concerns such as Alpha, Beta, and Delta arrive in Indonesia by May. So we responded with our program, Solidarity Sequence, to assist the national genomic surveillance efforts. We realized a significant gap in laboratory infrastructure for high throughput, fast, and accurate sequencing in Indonesia. In May 2021, Indonesia submitted 1,759 genomic sequence to the GSA database, which was only 0.098% of total infection. In addition, in late 2020 to early 2021, the biggest weakness was the turnaround time needed between sample collection to variant reporting, which was around 160 days. This fundamentally did not allow for genomic-based public health decision-making or effective testing and tracing of new emerging SARS-CoV-2 variants. After analyzing several factors, we decided that ONT's grid ion was the most sensible idea. It allowed for real-time sequencing and was flexible enough to take a range of any number of provided samples. Today, we would like to share the notable challenges that we found along the way. We identified that early we needed to open a discussion to introduce the sequencing platform. Later, we faced sample gathering issues due to misunderstandings of the results utilities. And perhaps the most predictable is our challenge in managing the bioinformatics learning curve. As we opened discussions with the government to assist the genomic sequencing effort, we were included in the National Genomic Sequencing Consortium. There were questions on platform performance with wide ranging discussions about undetected sections or NNN percentage, the necessary sequencing depth, and whether there needs to be a certain threshold necessary for accurate categorization. Internally, we noticed that some of our samples had slightly high undetected region. As such, in June, our N percentage were around 8%. This could be due to higher CT-valued samples that, lack to lack, uh, that led to a lack of RNA region to sequence. So we implemented CT value limit in June and see the improvement in July. We also reevaluate our wet lab methods and improve our sample handling method between our work groups. This proved helpful and, uh, in, because our undetected region continued to decrease in August and September. All these improvements led us to having more than 90% variant detection success and confidence in our lab and the chosen sequencing platform. Another issue that we faced was lack of samples, which was ironic because at that time, infection number was high. We acknowledge other issues such as widely variable infrastructure capable of sending samples or readiness to sample storage, for example. However, we note that a lot of health service providers were asking the same question. What is genome sequencing really for? So it dawned on us uh, that some centers could be encouraged to send their samples to sequencing centers if they're included in the big picture. We provided weekly variant detection reports and created an open forum where we update the variants we found and had an open educational forum in which we relate that genomic sequencing data is important to analyze questions surrounding vaccine efficacy or other variant related impacts such as spreading speed or effective case tracing. What we would like to note is that as we continue to communicate the usefulness of timely genomic surveillance, we observe that healthcare providers are more open to sending us samples, as seen here with an almost six times increase in samples received after the first workshop. In addition to that, National Genomic Consortium also defined recruitment strategies to ensure that the sequence data can be used for both public health decision and research purposes. The categories can be seen in this table. And the open forums, allowed for health service centers to be more capable in categorizing the samples. Seen here with a decrease from 72% of uncategorized samples to 46%, allowing for better utility of the results as they can now be grouped to specific cases, such as G4 for vaccine breakthrough infection or G7 for pediatric cases. Finally, the bioinformatics learning curve was a whole other monster in this matter. This figure is a story to tell. The blue bar showing the average days it took for us from sequencing N, a, signif a signifier of dry lab's work starting point, 
to the submission to Jisade, which signified which signify the dry lab team's endpoint, while the black line showed the number of samples received in that time point. At the beginning with low sample numbers, we were able to finish in around two days, which was great considering we were just starting. We started to see a trend upwards in sample number, and so we quickly moved to bulk upload method when submitting results to Jisade. A single upload method was a serious strain to our members' eyes, and it took a lot more time when there were 10 samples or hundreds. It took some time to practice the bulk upload, hence the slight increase in the day's use. We then began investing in creating a submission portal for healthcare centers to fill in a certain form, which quickly translate to GSATE bulk upload and allow for us to insert the sequencing results comfortably. This took more time because we had to empower healthcare centers or sample providers to fill in a certain form correctly. And we took the time to socialize this new method because we believe this would allow for faster processing in the near future. We received frame shift warnings on our results from GSATE at week six which requires several days of troubleshooting before resending them back for reevaluation. Some frame shifted sequence results had to be confirmed whether they were due to real significant changes or due to some issue in our pipeline. We were able to solve this by combining both rechecking of the results and discussing whether there were certain frame shifts that could be true by communicating with other members in the consortium. We began seeing faster processing time in week eight as we finished in only with eight days which we then used to create a custom sample results record revision. This allowed for sample identification, sequencing run and notification to be more easily and accurately done because now there is a double check mechanism between the wet lab and the dry lab team, and this can be done collaboratively between the teams online. As such, during week 10, when sample load effectively doubled, all the previous preparations allowed our dry lab team to finish their task in under seven days. And this continues on until now. Until November 2021, we have contributed 1,462 SARS-CoV-2 sequences out of the national 8,839. The numbers on the map were updated to late October, so it might have changed by now. We would just like to show that we outreach to different areas in Indonesia. Being an archipelago, there is still a gap in providing the necessary genomic sequencing to different islands. But we think we have started improving the availability to places like East Nusa Tenggara, some parts of Kalimantan, and some parts of Sumatra. We are glad that the total number of sequences have significantly increased, but we realize that percentage-wise, the issues still remain. We are looking forward continually to support national genomic surveillance programs. ONT can enable high throughput, various sequencing workflows, provide real-time analytical possibilities, relative mobility, and competitive sequencing quality. Hopefully, as we continually improving our approach to provide accessible genomic sequencing, we are able to reach these 17,000 islands and the full 270 million people and provide high throughput genomic sequencing service up to 1,000 tests per day with comparable to cost of PCR testing. As long as we take considerable attention to continuous optimization of, dry, of wet lab operations, educational forums to unlock the full potential of genomic sequencing data utility and careful investment in bioinformatics infrastructure. We would really like to express our gratitude to our team members supporting an advisory body from GSI Lab and the specific people or institutions that guide us through the journey. Thank you very much.